No-code automation is a great way to automate repetitive tasks at work. Until recently though, it's not been possible to create entirely new data inside of a workflow automation. Before, you could only duplicate existing data or do some math to create new values. But now with AI, your no-code automations can generate summaries, outlines, entire blog posts, and a whole lot more. So today, I'm gonna show you how to add automated open AI prompts to your Zapier automations. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use no-code automation with AI tools to help organizations create more time. If you'd like to see more workflow automation tips every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of adding an open AI action to your zaps so you can use AI generated content in your automations. We'll use an example with Asana tasks, but the same principles apply to any app. The key components in this tutorial are really Zapier and OpenAI. The other apps you wanna use are entirely up to you. Now let's get started. Right now, I'll give you a brief overview of the entire process, then, I'll walk you through each step in more detail. First, you need to create a new Zap and add a trigger event. You can use any app or event that you'd like for your trigger. Just use whatever makes sense for your circumstances and gathers the data you need for your AI prompt. For our example, we'll use an Asana trigger that runs whenever a new task is added to a project. Then, if you need to, you can add some actions or searches to gather any other data you might need for your prompt. Once your automation has all of the data you wanted it to find, add a new OpenAI action. Connect your account or sign in, then craft your prompt. In your prompt, you can use a combination of static text and dynamic data retrieved by earlier steps. Configure your other settings, like the model you want to use and the temperature of the response. Then. Add steps to save the AI-generated response to other apps. Once the prompt is generated, you can access it just like any other data in Zapier. So you can send it in a Slack message, an email, or copy it to virtually any SaaS tool. Before you start building your automation, bear in mind that sending prompts to OpenAI with Zapier will incur a small charge on your OpenAI account. OpenAI's API rates are very modest, and we'll discuss them a bit more later in the video. In any case, you won't be paying much to use the API, but it's worth keeping the charges in mind. Finally, you can also use a ChatGPT step instead of an OpenAI step if you'd prefer. Both apps in Zapier will work in largely the same way, but you will see a few different options for each. For this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the OpenAI integration. If you'd like to see a deep dive into the ChatGPT Zapier integration, let us know in the comments down below. For now, let's take a look at automating OpenAI prompts with Zapier step-by-step. -step. First, you'll need to create a new Zap and add a trigger. We'll go over this part of the automation pretty quickly since it's really not the focus of this tutorial. However, if you're not familiar with using Zapier in general, you can check out our beginner's guide to learn the basics. You can select any triggering event that you want that suits the automation that you want to build. For instance, if you want your OpenAI prompt to summarize an email, you'd probably use something like a Gmail trigger. In our example, we want OpenAI to generate a new description for every task that we add to an Asana project using the task's attributes as a basis for its response. After it generates the description, we'll have it update the task with the new information. To set up that automation, we've already created an Asana trigger that watches for a new task in a specific project. Once you've set up the trigger you want to use, be sure to test it and confirm that it's able to find some data. Next, if you want to use any additional data for your prompt that can't be found in your trigger, you'll need to add one or more action or search steps to find that data. In our example, we've added an Airtable search step to look up the client and project associated with the task. This information, which includes attributes like the project's start and end date, may help to inform the AI-generated description. In your automation, you might be able to gather all the data that you need in your trigger. But if you do need your automation to grab some extra data that will go into your prompt, just remember to add these steps before the prompt. If you've added any additional steps, test them out to make sure they're working properly. Once you've added all the data you need to feed into your prompt, it's time to add an action that will create and send that prompt. Add a new action to your zap. Choose OpenAI as the app and select Send Prompt as the event. 
Now, you'll need to connect your OpenAI account to Zapier. If you don't already have an OpenAI account, open up a new tab and create one at openai.com. Now, as I noted earlier, sending OpenAI prompts through Zapier will incur a charge on your OpenAI account. The exact price will depend on the language model that you use, but will ultimately come out to a few cents per prompt at most. Additionally, new OpenAI accounts include a $5 API credit, but this does expire after a few months if you don't use it. In the end, the cost to access OpenAI's API is very small, but it's worth noting that it isn't free. You can learn more about the pricing structure at openai.com pricing. That link will be in the resources board for this video, which can be found in the description down below. If you're comfortable with the charges you'll be responsible for, go to platform.openai.com to finish connecting your account to Zapier. Click on your account's name, select View API Keys. Click on Create New Secret Key to generate a key that will let third-party apps like Zapier access your OpenAI account. Copy that key and return to your Zap. Click on Connect a New Account and paste the key you copied earlier. The pop-up should close and return you to the Zap in progress. Now you can start configuring all of the necessary settings for your OpenAI prompt step. First, you'll be asked to choose the model that you want to use for the prompt. Zapier defaults to using the DaVinci model and recommends it for most use cases in your Zaps. However, there are several other models that you can choose from in this dropdown. If you'd like to learn more about each model and the cost to use it, you can check out the pricing page again. Next, you can start crafting the actual prompt you want to send to OpenAI. Your prompt can include both static text entered directly into this field and dynamic data retrieved from the trigger and earlier steps in your Zap. In other words, you can enter a prompt here exactly like you would with ChatGPT, but you can also replace some of the words with variables from Zapier data instead of static text. Be sure to note the style and tone you want the AI to use as well as the content you want it to generate. In our example, we'll use the prompt to ask the AI to generate a task description. Create a description for the following task based on the information provided. Your description should consist of one to three short sentences describing the task and its parameters. Include a brief assessment of the task's urgency based on the information provided. Write in the second person and use a friendly and professional tone, like you're speaking to a coworker. And now we'll include the task's key attributes identified with simple labels. By including dynamic data like this, we can ensure that the prompt describes each individual task that runs through the automation. Note that you may need to go back and adjust your prompt after testing it out. When you're dealing with AI, it's often a game of trial and error. If you want to avoid the very small charges as you test, you can use ChatGPT directly to test your prompt. However, ChatGPT may be using a different model than the one you've chosen in Zapier. Next, you can set the model's temperature. The temperature can also be thought of as the model's creativity. The higher the number, the less predictable the results will be. Additionally, as you set the temperature higher, the likelihood of inaccurate hallucinations increases as well. Whenever you're dealing with AI, there's no guarantee of accuracy, but you should probably go for a lower number, maybe even zero, if you want a more accurate but less creative answer. The next setting is maximum length. This sets the max length of the AI's response in tokens. With OpenAI's language models, 1,000 tokens are roughly equivalent to 750 words. You can change this setting, but note that even if you make it longer, your model may only be able to use 256 tokens as context. You can search for more info about the model you're using if you want to know more about exactly how it works. Next, you can enter an optional stop sequence. If you enter a stop sequence, the AI will stop generating an answer once it produces the same characters as you've provided in your stop sequence. If you don't want to add a stop sequence, and you probably won't in most use cases, you can just leave it blank. Finally, let's take a look at these last three settings, top P, frequency penalty, and presence penalty. These are all advanced options for adjusting the output of the model. 
You can tweak these options to make the model more or less repetitive, for example. You can read the descriptions provided in Zapier for more information, but you probably won't need to change these for most use cases. Once you've configured the OpenAI action as desired, give the step a test. You should see OpenAI's output along with a lot of other data. Note if you're using dynamic data to populate this step, the AI's answers may be quite different each time. The test should give you a general sense of how it will respond, but expect some variation each time the Zap runs with different data. Among the other data, you can also see things like how many tokens the prompt used. After reviewing the test data, you can adjust your OpenAI prompt as needed. Once it's ready, you can add an additional step to your Zap to share, edit, or otherwise use the AI-generated answer. Add a new action to your Zap. You can add an action in virtually any app that you want to use on Zapier. You could send the prompt in a Slack message, add it to an email, enter it into an Airtable record, or anything else you'd like to do with it. For our example, we'll add a new step to update our original Asana task with this new description. To find the right task, we'll enter the ID of the task that triggered the automation into the task field. Then, we'll leave most of the fields blank. By leaving them blank in this update step, we're essentially telling Zapier to leave those fields as they are. It won't delete the contents that are already there. We're only going to update the notes field by adding in the response value from the OpenAI step. Once you've configured your step to your liking, give it a quick test. We get a success message in Zapier. Then we open up Asana and we can see the task updated with a new description. If your Zap ran correctly, turn it on and publish it. Now, whenever your trigger condition is met, Zapier will automatically send a prompt to OpenAI exactly as you've configured it. AI is rapidly unlocking all sorts of new possibilities in workflow automation. Now, as automators, we are no longer limited to working with existing data. We can use AI prompts to generate, edit, and summarize new content. And we can use automation providers like Zapier to send the answers to any app we want. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human. Like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. And you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, don't forget, keep the flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation, and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.